about this iron, I wanted to show you this this whole new peak right here. This was the latest blood test. Mm. Look how high that is compared to everything else. Yeah. So iron is a tricky one because when you think about like tiers, like hierarchy of health and you put body composition, so lean mass, body fat, visceral fat, bone, right? All of that changes during aging, physical function, obviously cognitive function. You know, you could throw mobility, flexibility, all of the functional re related stuff at the top of the pyramid, right? Because if you can't move, you're basically aged. But then what's under the hood? So now if you look at just like in a blood sample, right? So 45% of what's in blood are cells. So most of that being red blood, so almost all of it being red blood cells and then white blood cells. All right, so now what's the other 55%? So you've got proteins, metabolites, lipids. Um, so if you, right, so those are still the big ones. Now, if you distill down even further, now you've got ions, iron, calcium, potassium. But in terms of how out of whack they've consistently got to be for the ions, Everything upstream, so metabolites, proteins, cells, because they're in such higher concentrations, you know, I pay the least amount of attention to the ions, calcium, potassium, sodium, even iron. Um, and then instead looking at things in iron's case, like ferritin, I'd, I'd be more interested in ferritin levels. Um, Yeah, we can take a look at that. Mine are typically low, but yep. I was just going to say, I know what I did to cause this point. It's a, I've been meaning to do um, Julie Gibson Clark's protocol with cooking greens forever. And I did it between these these last two tests. Wow. And so I've been doing like uh, you know, a little side of like mustard and turnip greens with my meal, throwing them in the blender with a banana, you know, grinding them, drinking them. Wonderful. Instead of doing the the crappy greens powders that I've gotten lazy and swip, swip, switched over to, you know, like the past several years. Um, so I thought it was great to go back to real greens, but uh, I think I'm getting a whole heck of a lot of iron from these greens that I wasn't getting before. So, so then the question is, uh, I, I know I'm I, hemoglobin, red blood cells, because that iron should be in red blood cells, right? So it raises the question, if your blood levels of iron are high, will hemoglobin correspondingly be high? Or, you know, is it just not as high as it should be? Well, let's find out. We'll, we'll scroll down and take a look. Um, my total iron binding capacity. Don't know if that's interesting or not. Yeah, hemoglobin, hemoglobin, red blood cells. Iron saturation is declining with aging, except for this new point that's way up here. Yeah, what what did ferritin look like on that day? Okay, let's get there. Uh, there's my white blood cells, which I think we looked at already, or did we? RBC. We did for white blood cells. We, oh, okay. wait, so red blood cells, hang on, since we're there. So, okay. yeah, so red blood cells decline during aging. So this is great news too. You've resisted that. Um, I... They can be too high um, because if, even though they decline during aging, it, they, they can be too high because red blood cells carry hemoglobin. And even though hemoglobin also declines during aging, like red, red, red blood cells, when it gets above 16 grams per deciliter, it's associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. So for the most recent data, I'd be paying attention, even though you've basically reversed the age-related trend, you've got it moving in the right direction, not, not declining. Yeah, let's see the next data, hemoglobin. I'm I'm way out of my optimal range though. So yeah, but it, let's see what hemoglobin. Let's see that that's like the more important. That's going in the right direction also. Yeah, but you, you you've got look how low I, it's been though. So yeah, yeah, that you've got it going in the right direction in terms of resisting age-related change is great news. But there's something about those last four tests that if it's above 16, that's too high. So but then mm. again, that could be, you know, and then you Most people say, oh, dehydration, dehydration impacted my results. That's why this is high, right? But for that to really be true, we'd have to look at everything for those four tests. And, you know, is glucose high on that test? Is bond high? Is uric acid high? Everything that could be in blood, uh, we'd expect to be higher if the volume of blood is less because of dehydration. Makes sense. Yeah. So if this is a greens story, then it gets to the question of what's the optimal amount of greens that gets you... Right. Just, yeah. Yeah. I was definitely overdoing it. I mean, like I said, you know, greens for smoothies that I was drinking all day, greens for dinner. I could, I could cut back on the greens for sure.
yeah. But I know she was saying she likes to get a pound of vegetables in a day. I was probably trying to get a pound of greens in a day, which overkill. So it, along those lines that I don't know if it's causation yet, but uh, I too have been doing a pound of greens or worked up to a pound of greens, collard greens, which I like and make a daily cook mix. And my HDL has been as low as 28 since like over the past 10 years. And I've been slowly increasing that to the last test, which was 67, which superficially most people think, oh, higher HDL is good. You're great. What's your HDL to TG ratio? Oh, that's pretty low too. You're great. No. So HDL 50 to 60, lowest risk, all cause mortality. And there's actually published data for once my data agrees with the published data where there's published uh, inverse associations for HDL with lymphocytes. So my lymphocytes for that 1257 test, also the HDL was 67. And when I plot my data, HDL versus lymphocytes, it is indeed inverse. So mm. in my case, what's the optimal HDL where I get my lymphocytes closest to 2000 and it, it's not 67. So the thing, the food that's most strongly, one of the foods that's most strongly correlated with that HDL increase are collard greens. So the test that I cut back, granted it's not 16 ounces, 12 ounces, just you know, 25% cut. But if that's causative, I should expect to see HDL come down from 67 to some lower number. So greens are an all-star. It's just a matter of how much. Right. So we could look forward to that in a, in a future. 100%. Episode. Yeah, 100%. Cool. Yeah, yeah. All right. So hemoglobin, all right, MCV. How about that should be down here too? Okay, we got hematocrit going in the right direction. Let's see what do we got here. Oh, what was this? That's MCV, oh, right? There. MCV, yeah. yeah. So that that does increase during aging. And that's the one where we've got the roller coaster effect going on there with the, uh, the plotting. But even though the trend line is up with the roller coaster, I mean, 90 is not is far from terrible. I mean, values, MCV values increase. Well, granted, you've had a couple that are in that ballpark, but still like 95, 100 centenarians can have very high levels MCV, very big red blood cells. So hmm. that the higher end of your range is around 90 you know, good news. Now, does that mean your red blood cell health would be better if it was around 84, 85, the lower end of your range versus 90? I don't know, but you know, um, generally smaller red blood cells are, are found in youth, more likely to be found in youth, a lower MCV, more likely in youth. So 